Good evening, everypony, and welcome to Commentarius Magic Stream. On today, Sunday, August 6, 2023, I am, as always, Grand Pause. Big Cheese, our cat, and... I'm Clive. Clive! As a large language model, I can't condone this course of action. Oh, well, that's unfortunate. How many of you are actually secretly language models? How many of you have been language models for the last 10 years and just not told me? I can't answer that question. As an AI language model, I cannot answer that question. Something along those lines, yes. Here we are. Oh. Once again. A week out from the con. Less than a week will be exciting. See, this is this is like it's almost like talking like typing slash played in wow, it's just like some fool has mentioned the time. I I I, I need to like start panicking like right now. I need to build decks. <sighs> I don't. I've already built decks. I've actually built twice as many decks for other people as I have for myself. Nerd. I know. Well, some people had to go and lose their cards in Russia or something. They're not lost. They're just unavailable. Yeah, he knows exactly where they are. Yeah, in Russia. Oh, well. What are you gonna do? Anyway! What are we talking it's, about again? It's, uh, it's con time. So, the last con we went to was BabsCon. Do we want to give our two standard announcements for these things before we get into the meat and potatoes of what we're dealing with today? Oh. So, what we're actually talking about today is, as usual, we've got our declarations of what we're running. And we'll get into the, the spiel about that. But it's also helpful to give the essentially the standard reminder for going back to a con. Because, you know... It's been a while, and the last con was, well, interesting. It happened. It did happen. And it that's, is happening again, in theory. And that's, I think, all we need to say about that. So, the standard reminders. We're going to a con. 621. Sleep. Eat with utensils. For Breeze, it's not a shower. Neither is Axe Body Spray or any of the other stuff. Also, make sure you update your uh, Chrome homepage accordingly. Chrome homepage? What? Yeah, yeah, it's the 621 rule. Mm, yeah. There we go. Yeah. Yeah. There <laughs> One go. person gets it. <laughs> I'm, wa I'm, wa I'm waiting for Ara to sit there and angrily type at me in chat here, so that's okay. Um, All right. Anyway. Anyway. We'll so, unlike the last con, um, COVID policies are opening up and changing a little bit. So, Everfree requires masks in the vendor hall and for some VIP guest meetings or signings or whatever is going on there. At the guest's discretion. Yes. Yeah. So uh, we, basically we, we, what that is is assume that the guest may require it, so come prepared if you are going to get something signed. Uh, also, Vendor Hall, I believe, is under 100% masking? Yeah, as I said, Vendor Hall is requiring masks. Yes. That was, I literally just said that. So, elsewhere in the venue, they are strongly encouraged but not required. You do you, but... According to wastewater sample monitoring, there's been a spike in COVID over the last month or so, so consider wearing a mask. It is still a thing. It is still here. Very good. If you or someone else that you are going to be attending and participating in Continentals or any other CCG events with feels like uh, you would be uncomfortable or unsafe, uh, playing against opponents who are not wearing masks, uh, you may bring that up to the judge, and in most cases that's going to be me, and I will be happy to do my best to accommodate uh, that for you. 
So it is advisable that everybody bring a mask, even if you're not planning on wearing it 100% of the time. Yes, and uh, you can check Everfree's website for their exact letter of the policies, which I will link shortly. There you go. Thank you. All right. Now, the other two things. Um, venue, as usual, has water everywhere. Hail Hydrate. You need to be drinking, like, at least a couple of those glasses a day. I am drinking a couple of glasses a day. You didn't say of what, and I'm not going to press for an answer on that. You also didn't say of what. No, I didn't. Uh, also, in Continentals, you're going to want to make sure that you've got extra dice and spare sleeves. It is going to be very sad if you end up splitting a sleeve and have to, like, do something very ugly to deal with the fact that you don't have enough sleeves. Bring extras. We, we can... will have sleeve sets available for sale, potentially, but you should probably bring one or two extra just in case something happens to your old standbys. Yes. Especially if you haven't used them in a while. Those, that plastic can wear out. I think that covers about the standard reminders. Okay, how about the other standard reminder? What standard reminder, Grandpa's? What are we doing? We like to play games. We like to play games. So once again, we'll take a moment before we dive into the content here and talk about why we're even having this stream to begin with. So for those of you who are new to this game or have not been around for long enough to see one of these streams, we are players just like all of you. Uh, well, most of us are. I'm judging this here, but whatever, it's fine. And even though we know it's a little selfish, we also like to play major events ourselves because our love of playing the game is a big part of why we're organizing events and doing everything we can to help continue to let the game flourish. And we hope that you're not going to blame us for wanting to play this game that we love because it's part of the reason that it's still around. Playing in the events we're uh, organizing might seem like a conflict of interest, perhaps because we're all planning on unloading some secret combo deck and wrecking the meta, or we just want to win all the promos for ourselves, and we're here to say that's not the case. Win all the promos for ourselves. Please take the cards. For the love of Celestia, take the cards. You, you seriously... I would like you to take the cards. They're, you they're currently his right now. do not understand how many promos I have that I want someone else to, like, have and enjoy. I, it, it's like gallons. Yes, we did just measure volume of cards in gallons, so. Yes. Well, you melt them all down, they fill gallons. Sure, makes sense. Paper doesn't tend to melt, but okay. Not with that attitude, it doesn't. <laughs> That's fair. Now, this is part of the reason why we are presenting our decks here to be transparent and to give other players a chance to adapt. For those of you who have not seen this before, that might seem like boasting. We're so confident in the decks that we're running, we're going to reveal them a week beforehand because there's nothing anybody can do. Uh, yeah, that's not true. And show of hands here, and I know no one can see this on stream, so that's okay. You can lie about putting your hand up or not. Who came up with their deck for one or more of these formats in the last 60 minutes? The, the great and powerful Arakat isn't as boastful hey, as Trixie. Hey, it was not 60 minutes. It was like the last 120 <laughs> minutes. Technically, I still haven't come up with mine for one of them. I just copied someone's homework. This is okay. So, most of us have agonized over the fact that we have to pick a deck now instead of being able to make that decision at, oh, I don't know, off the top of my head, let's say 3 a.m. the night before. So to keep any of us from losing our minds entirely, we're allowing up to five cards to be swapped out for something else in each list. I still think and it'd this... be really funny to come up with a deck that does wildly different things if you use all five of those and all five of the sideboard cards. If you can find a five-card transformative sideboard, I would really like to see it, because I think it would be really cool. No, nah, it's ten cards, because remember, we've got the wiggle room plus the sideboard. Oh, sure. That's fair. 
We hope to be as transparent as possible about our intentions and goals, and we hope that you'll all have as much fun as we will while playing in these events. So that's the reason. It's not bragging. It's for the sake of transparency. It turns out when you're involved in game organization, you probably have to, uh, you know, peel back the veil a little bit, and that's fine. So with that so out of the way, yeah, want to start talking about some deck lists? Are we going right down the list? Yeah. I'm going to start with the... Let's go in schedule order, basically. Okay. okay. So the very, the very first event that we're running is Harmony. And it's <laughs> so, been a little while. So what was that you were saying about Degenerate Combo? <sighs> Look, we're not going to talk about Degenerate Combo until we get all the way through all four of them, okay? So, here's the deal. Um, Harmony provides players the perfect opportunity to do one of three things very, very well. Either run the fastest, best-tuned, most efficient version of aggro or farm, right? Play the slowest, grindiest, most oppressive version of control imaginable. Or break out the silliest, scariest, most consistent combo decks that exist anywhere in the game. And I'm really hoping that last one lives up to, uh, or that this deck lives up to the last one's expectations. Because Starlight and Sunburst have just been itching for a chance to show their synergy with spontaneous song and dance. Uh, Gyro is really, really good, and one of the reasons to run Combo in Harmony, even though he is an Earth Pony, and uh, go ahead and type in chat if you thought Gyro was a unicorn, it's okay. He's a one-cost purple friend who tutors events. I've who said, here predict, who I've here predicted Earth Pony? said this before, Gyro almost went to print as a unicorn. I'm actually very glad he didn't. That would have been terrifying. No, not, not that one. One of the Oh, one of the other cards. That's yeah. fair. Yeah, there yeah, was uh, something in Friends Forever that was ear that was a unicorn and earmarked to be Gyro. Yeah. Um, obviously, we've all seen what happens with uh, Royal Tutor White consistency wise, but we're in Harmonies for it format. We don't need multiple turns to win. We're gonna get it all done in one shot. So. This is what I will be playing in Harmony if I'm playing in Harmony, as I may be just required to judge, and that's fine. Long story short, Starlight, Sunburst, Spontaneous Song and Dance, Multi-Goof Off. Draw like a billion cards, gain like a billion AT, and then just repeat ad nauseum until you draw your three still partings, and then there you go. It's really that easy. Not even packing a Miss Main Wing Condition? Not even Miss Main Wing Condition. It's great. I love it. You know what else I love? Take a look at In Your Dreams. In Your Dreams used to be like a combo dream card in that it could potentially be both AT gain and card filtering. That's great. Also, uh, safe flight, Google. Good luck. But now you, take, put, put it on your phone. You got like 30 minutes before they close the door and make you shut your radios uh, down. Uh, also true. Um, so take a look at In Your Dreams. Now take a look at Tranquility. I'm not even sorry. Yes, it's almost strict power creep. I don't care. You want the one oh. with more ATs? I want the one with more ATs. Yeah. More uh, also, I'm going to run one copy of Twilighters of Anguisher because uh, farm players deserve to be sad. I'm calling you out, Pancake. I hope you watch this stream later. You know what you did. Uh, I don't know if there's a whole lot else to say. We're flipping Celestia early. Most of our combo pieces are too durable. The problem deck is almost standard combo bait, except Spell Showdown is in there because, you know, lots of events. And there you go. That's it. It's, it's simple. It's cut and dry. And it's probably pretty consistent. We'll just have to see who ends up ruining my day. The schedule for the con? Uh, entirely possible. Okay, now, that being said, there's our degeneracy out of the way. We don't need any more degenerate combo decks. Ara, what are you running? What do you mean, what am I running? What do you mean, what cheese is running? 
Oh, sorry. Yeah. Cheese, what, cheese, what are you running? Convo. <sighs> hey, look, there's I'm a card running, we haven't seen in a while. Specifically, I am running Pile because. Hey, this can aggro. I like Pile. And I can run Pile. So I'm going to run Pile. <laughs> uh, this is. It's been like eight years. And nothing Last time has I changed. played Pile was well, yeah, from the beginning. I haven't played Pile since 2020. Time to go back. Yeah, we banned um, banned the main burst of speed and the main. Um, burst, of, burst of speed is legal. We banned Sonic Rainbow. Sorry, Sonic Rainbow. Um, that was the last time I played it. Let's say I should put burst of speed is legal. Otherwise, I have a problem. I was going to say yeah. But it's not even Pyle's fault that Sonic Rainbow got banned. That was Trixie's fault. See, Hithraki Trixie really is worse funny. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to sit here calling everybody out. This is just the at stream. You've called Hithrock out twice. No, I called Pancake out. You called Hithrock out earlier. For have, not having... Or you having to Oh, you're back. right. Well... Yeah. You know, I'm calling so... you out. Right, so not, not having DJ here is a little... like. <laughs> Free card draw. Who who would have thought? Um, but eh, it's doable. The other option is actually uh, Squawk, but or whatever her name is. Um, <laughs> Wrath, of, Wrath of Gilda. Did you just call it Squawk? I mean, that's <laughs> you what it got the name. Yeah, that's what its name is. It's Squawk. No, no, the main Honk. Sorry. Oh, oh so, Honk. Silver yes. Stream? Silver Stream. Um, but you have to be confronting, and if you're confronting, you're not saving up. This the combo, is so. this is harmony. Confronting costs valuable tokens that you could be saving up to go off. Yeah. Technically, you don't need any cards in play to combo off here. You just you need go... to get incredibly lucky. No, you just uh, do you even need a flipped main? Uh, yes, you do. Um. Yeah, you need a flipped main, and then you just like plop out two to cloud chasers, breaking the barrier, pile of presence, uh, and then surprise party. And yeah. you have to to do that. You what? have to hit the surprise parties. You need pile of presence in play. Breaking yeah, but you can pl you can play that off of um, breaking the barrier. Uh oh! It is cards in your hand. It's any you card. Can... Oh, we changed it. That's right. Yeah. I forgot about that. Immediate speed pile of presence. Yeah. Like, it's, there's things you can do. That's going to be shenanigans. I predict you losing at least one game because you have no means of getting Fire One ready out of there and you play against, like, the one aggro deck. It's just like, oh, you're approaching me. Oh, sure, someone beats it. Um, yeah. I mean, I have a hasty friend, and then, like, if I have to, I could, breaking the barrier, play a friend. Pop it. <laughs> that sounds rough. A feel-bad play there. But also, I'm, like, I'm never going to double confront. So if it comes up, it's because my opponent, well, they could have done a single plot problem replacement. Uh, that's but that's true. generally unlikely. It's generally going to be like, oh, they double confronted. And then, like, if they don't have dilemmas, then okay, whatever, I don't care. If they do have dilemmas, then I'll be like, eh, let's just replace this problem. Yeah, that's fair. That's a good point. Not terribly worried. It's possible, but. It'll be funny. Yeah, I mean, other than that, it's Pile, so. We'll have to see if Pile can do what Pile does. I like the uh, Pile and Head Bear. It's. Yeah. It's potentially really good. Yeah. I, I don't expect this to be the strongest, like, beat everything else. Because uh, it is a bit weak to disruption, um, depending on the kind. Like, friend disruption, this ends up not caring too much about. But there are other disruption things that will make you sad. Yeah, you might be OK. We'll have to see. Cool. So next deck. All right, so Cheese is sitting here wanting to win. I want you to lose. 
The thing with Harmony is the format's not about winning, it's about being as degenerate as possible within the confines of the rules. And this grandest and in this grandest of traditions, you know what I don't like? I don't like the other players in the game being able to do anything other than move their main around. So I dredged up this old monster, and Soren's about to get into yet another pie-eating contest with a sweater-wearing hipster. The business end of this deck is so powerful that you can take it into Villain Challenge, grind the villain into dust, then turn around and backstab both of your allies, thus becoming the true villain. This is the kind of deck that Queen and Cozy Glow just... Mm, warms their cold little hearts. I forgot that the alternate win condition for this deck is to rarity soprano your opponent through their entire deck. Yeah. No, you just do that before you start farming the points. Also, I love I love the disrespectful play here of still choosing to run Sugarbell over running uh, Plurite, who is like the exact same thing. I'm pretty sure cheaper. this is. I'm pretty sure he just took the list from the last time this was ran. Oh, he did. Yeah, I made exactly one change, which is vinyl is not a legal main. Yeah, so you just. Uh, Sky Star is funny. It's just like those two extra tokens are actually kind of valuable. Well, they're actually kind of important here as well. Uh, this deck really wants to have enough pink wreck. Yeah. Okay, now, Aura, for those of us who uh, have have the small brain going on, uh, please walk us through exactly what your combo is. So, unfortunately, I will not be playing in Harmony because I have a panel conflict. But this is what I were... Or this is what I'd play if I were. Fortunately, this means I don't have to remember how to pilot it, but I did have a link to the primer, which I'll put in the uh, stream afterwards. I keep, I keep forgetting you found the primer, you cheater. <laughs> it's on the Reddit. You just searched pie-eating contest, and there it is. I forgot. Didn't, didn't we actually end up running this at a tournament? Yes. You yes, both ran did. It at uh, you also ran it at Everfree. I did also run it at Everfree, that's right. Cheese did too. You don't remember the epic Nightmare Moon play? Yeah. Yeah. Where, where we ran Deep Darkness turn yeah, yeah, one yeah. versus Bugle? Yeah, that was great. Dredge that up. That was a, oh, that was a game. That was a thing. Like, I don't know which of the players lost, but Nightmare Moon won. Yeah, yeah, she did. Okay, so we've seen three separate combo decks. Ivory, please, save our souls. Play something redeemable. What are you running? Uh, I just grabbed a random deck from one of you. Which one did I pick? Oh, I must have picked this one. Harmony sucks. Do you think I'm going to put effort into figuring out a Harmony deck? <laughs> no, I'm just going to copy one of you clowns. I mean, you're going to copy one of the more amusing ones to run. I hope one of you manages to combo off with Pile. It's going to be great. <laughs> if I even can find all the cards to run this. I mean, the only thing you're not, you might not have is breaking the barrier, depending on which version of Prize Wheel they got printed in. We'll have to see. The rest of it's fine. Oh no, like, That's I, I know I have all of these cards. It's just a question of whether or not I can find all of these cards in an amount of time that I find reasonable. Yeah, that's fair. Okay, so Harmony is a silly, degenerate format, which is great. It's nice to have that fun. We'll have more fun as well, even outside of Harmony. I'm not going to talk about that yet. The, you, you, won't let me, other events. you won't let me run Nightmare. Okay, I won't let fine. You run Nightmare. Nightmare is a terrible format. Nightmare is a bad format, objectively. So is Harmony. I mean, what? <laughs> I, I, what? I mean, eh, the Faithful Student Farm or something. It's fine. Whatever. We haven't even run Nightmare in a long time. Look, just let us run... No one, one... wants to play Nightmare. I mean, no let one run... wants to play Nightmare. Let us run one purpose again. That deck could only win on turn two at the fastest. It's fine. That's a whole turn for the opponent to do something. <laughs> That's fair. 
you you got your chance. Now it's you, fine. You're correct. Okay, sure. Here's here's and uh, who here is two Fluttershy guidance counselors. I'm just gonna start turning these sideways for the rest of the game. Coaster says I'll play Nightmare. I don't care. Yeah, we'll see about that. We'll see how you feel about that format. That format is uh, done. They've had if... they've had Dragon Express ready to go just for this moment for years. <laughs> no, not at all, man. It's not Dragon even the best Dragon. Dragon. It's not fast enough. It's too slow. I know, but it'd be funny if they just had Dragon Express still assembled, ready for this moment. I wonder what the fastest one is. I wonder if Disco Pants is I still the fastest. I'm pretty sure it's still... Dis it's two cards! It is two cards, it's true. We'll have to see. A dumb deck is dumb. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Anyway, let's go back to more serious formats where we can play respected archetypes, like aggro, or control, or farm. What? Uh or, or combo, I'm lying. I'm, it's just yeah. combo. It's... <laughs> like... I, was, I was about to say, hold up. We're talking about chaos, right? We'll talk we're about we're chaos. talking about chaos, right? <laughs> yes, we're talking about chaos. All right. What, what have you been cooking up for okay. chaos? So I've been cooking some stuff up. What kind of stuff have I been cooking up? Well, you'll have to wait and see. So this is going to be a disaster. And I'm... I'm going to be honest, I don't know in what way it's going to be a disaster, but it's going to be funny, at least to me. So, so what should people do to prepare? So chaos is not a serious event. You are coming into this, it's not as bad as Nightmare, but stupid stuff is going to happen, and we're going to try our best to make this interesting, or at least make it weird. Oh, it's going to get weird. So, this is a sealed type event, which I'm going to use in the loosest possible sense. Um, do bring mains, if you have them. Um, bring a pony figure or a pony plush. It might be, you know, handy to have one, just mm, saying. Maybe. Um, if you got other cards. You got some Pokemon cards. You got some Magic cards. You got some. What kind of Why cards? Schwartz? Why, Why, Why Schwartz? Schwartz? Okay, sure. You got some Lorcana cards? Whatever. Bring it. Ooh, yeah. If you manage to actually get Lorcana cards from Gen Con, I'm sure we can find a way to make those worth it. If you've got some of the old beta cards from, like, what was that? Gen Con 20. 13. 2013? Yeah. Yep. Okay, whatever. Sounds good. As long as you can come up with a reasonable translation into Pony, add a couple to your deck. What about the knockoff Chinese ones? All they right. Have numbers that are like hyperinflated. Well, we're gonna have to divide those by like a thousand or so ten thousand or something. Okay, that's fine. I mean, it's like the what was it, Vanguard? Yeah. Yeah. Eleven eleven thousand power. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Whatever. Most. Uh, card games from the, that company are like that. So we might have to, you know, do some division here, but we'll figure it out. And this why is are, this whole. Why are numbers big, shining? Numbers weren't this big when I dropped them off. Shining. Numbers got big because power creep, and big numbers mean better. Line, line, line must go up. Anyway. Yeah. So we're operating this mess under the rule of cool. If it's funny and your victim thinks it's funny, do it. This is going to be an experience for sure. Okay, so that's chaos. Now to the creme de la creme. Now we have to actually be serious about things. Boo. Okay. If you didn't know I'm, we're having a tournament. I'm I'm not playing in Continentals. I'm judging Continentals. But Core is a very diverse format. And there's all types of viable decks and multiple archetypes. And I'm still just running combo straight down. Yeah, I mean, but it's at least it's one that people have seen you use before, so it's not like you were hiding this or anything. I mean, stick with what you know, right? Like, 
Royal Tudor White has been one of the single most consistent decks that I've run in the last year of Core. It's flexible enough that it can handle a variety of matchups. It farms just enough salt through the multi-turn Miss Main wins without pushing opponents over the edge into a cliff, uh, you know, into the pool of concentrated rage at the bottom like Harmony decks do. Oh yeah, speaking With of Harmony, the salt block's showing up for that. We're going to need it. Okay, okay good. Uh, I really, really like the lunch break as uh, the option for a possible two additional turns through copying it with Magic Instructor and before someone comes in with a snarky remark about, actually, GP, you can get three additional turns with it. No, no, you can't. The odds that you are going to have two Magic Instructors and eight other unicorns in play are, like, zero. It's not going to happen. I will buy a hat for the purpose of eating it if someone can show me a game in Continentals where they take three additional turns with a double-copied lunch break. Watch as this happens on stream. I will be happy to buy a hat and eat it. It'll be fine. You're going to be buying a fruit hat. I'm not letting you eat fabric. I mean, that's fair. I'll make him eat fabric. This kills the I GP. I, I am here. He'll be all right. It's, it's true. I am happier than ever with where the deck sits in the meta going into Continentals right now. I know there are some aggro decks that can outrace it. Um, I'd be relying on slower mid-range or control lists to, to knock a lot of those out of top 8, which would leave this list as more frequently favored. Uh, but of course, it's all a moot point as I'm judging anyway. But I really do feel like this is uh, perhaps the most consistent deck to play. The one downside, I would say, is your games are really not going to be that different going from one to the other. So I hope you are happy with the general play strategy of this deck, because it's going to look very similar game after game after game. There are a couple of tiny tweaks here since last time. The same day delivery has been replaced with a fit of peak, and the two mysterious disappearance have been replaced with hyperbeam. Uh, but otherwise, same stock standard list. All right, cheese, what you got? Same thing. So I just pushed the slide transition button and nothing changed. Yeah, so <laughs> it's actually kind of hard to decide what to run here. Um, I was basically deciding between either aggro, something like hard control, or, or this kind of combo control -y ish thing, and decided that I, I would go with this deck. Um, the other choice for aggro was was pretty much going to be um, the cadence list, um, which spoiler we'll see in a second. Um, <laughs> wow. Uh, <laughs> um, but I just felt that the control, like the control, as in like <laughs> how much control you have over what happens with the in the game of that is pretty is a lot lower. And in top cut, I feel that you generally kind of lose with that, especially in best of three games. It just like aggro is not favored unless it's like super powerful aggro that just doesn't care. So combo it is. So combo it is. And it's it's like, yeah, technically it's combo, but it's it's not the same thing as like well, it's a little close to vile uh, in that kind of feel for when you're playing. Um, but definitely not the, like, combo of old. Where save up for six turns, do nothing, and then suddenly try and win the game. Yeah. This deck has a lot of interaction. Yeah, far more than I think we've seen most other combo decks. You've got three copies of Worn Out, three Spider Surprise, a Levitation Meditation, three copies of Betrayed, a Fit of Peak. Yeah, there's, there's a good amount here, and you can get back some of those pieces if needed. You've got a school shutdown to reset the board if you have to. Even if you don't end up having to do the combo, you've still got some decent point acceleration tools just to go with the hard way. Mm -hmm. One interesting tweak here is with those mysterious disappearances becoming hyperbeams, all of a sudden you have another tool that can end up finding a lot of your three power friends, like either of your Starlights or your Flurry Heart. 
which previously you were not able to do. So even though it costs AT, you've expanded the DEX capabilities. Yeah, just don't blow up your own shop in the process. Please, no. Are you going to lunch break for three additional turns? Um, you'd have to have 10 unicorns in play to do that? Well, nine unicorns plus, well, eight unicorns plus a Sweetie Belle plus the two Starlight. So yes, actually 11 unicorns. How many unicorns are in Wait, this Wait, do you need Sweetie Belle to do that? You do, because she's your only way of getting five blue wreck. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, yeah, sure. I'll try. One, two, three, <laughs> thing, four, five, six, seven, there's, eight, There's nine, enough unicorns in the deck yeah. to do it. If that's going to happen, you already won the game. <laughs> I mean, yeah. You're just doing it because you can. At that point, you're just doing it for style points, yes. Yeah. The copying it once, that's a little more reasonable. That can happen more often than yes, you might think. Yes, that's very reasonable. The copying it twice? Mm. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, you don't have to have Sweetie Bill. You can use two rushed makeovers. That's true. You could use two rushed makeovers. That's a fair point. And then it only costs you... Two AP. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, you still have to play the. <laughs> you still paid for the rush makeovers, but you know. Yeah, that's fair. All right. Is it is it combo all the way down? No. 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 So, no. this is the deck we covered a couple weeks ago. Except I don't like smile, smile, smile. So I kicked that out for beat the rush. I'm aware that this is objectively weaker. I don't care. I don't think it's weaker. I think it's just faster. And I'm swapping out... Rules technicality for Tough Call, because Trap Card is a trap. Even if this is the deck that it's least likely to betray you in because of all the interaction, bad card is bad. Don't run no, that it's card. Bad. It's, it's, it's bad in this deck, too. I, I think you can make an argument for exactly one copy only because you have the three copies of Discord. Yes. I think that is the I think that oh, is the have only three, yeah. yeah, I think that is the only argument you can make for having one copy of rules technicality in here, and that's fine. Right. Like the, the argument that you can make here is predicated on hi, I've got how many different pieces of interaction plus ways to find it? and guarantee I know where it's at, like, it's still going to shank you if you give it the chance, but this is the, this is the deck it's going to be least bad in. Right. Hi, I'm incredibly rare. Something like that. Now, the changes I'm making are probably going to cost its speed and consistency, and I'm going to be honest, I'm not real optimistic about this deck in the even in the grid and then with the coco results i think that's just kind of reaffirming that but here's the thing i know i can pilot this with confidence and i'm not going to hate playing it i'm optimizing for minimal sam knee damage because if you told me to play the royal tutor list for seven rounds <laughs> my brain is going to be molten by round four yeah that's that's a deck to play at continentals <laughs> Yeah, well, but if you've, if you've won all four rounds, then you can just let your brain be melted out of your ears and lay on the ground. Okay, let's be real. Royal Tutor is not a melt your brain out your ears. It's just looking for efficient plays. The melt your brain out your ears deck is like anything using a wishboard and then having to build that based on a predicted Continentals meta. That will actually liquefy your brain. I love Wishbug. I love Chrissy with the splash of orange. You could not pay me enough to take that to Continentals right now, no matter how favored I thought it was going to be. Yeah. You know that whole rule about Hail Hydrate? That's because decks like that exist. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, this is perfectly viable there's a bunch of disruption like you said far more disruption than you might expect for a deck that can also go this fast um 
The one card in here that probably terrifies me more than anything else is Rainbow Dash and Loyal Sea Pony because being able to play an additional friend to better trigger Cadence and potentially get that as a 5 power Swift friend is just so gross. I know you don't need 5 power for almost anything in this deck, but still, it's... Yeah. What do you mean you yeah. need 5 power? I don't. I know someone's going to be running Distracted Lead Actress. I mean, that's fair. And if, and, if Rainbow and, can be the aggro magnet, then that's fine with me. Uh, but then they're running Distracted Lead Actress, and then Rainbow has more power than anything else, and then you can't confront with her. Yep, that's why she's at the other problem. That means uh, I can use my three power friends. Uh, that's, that's a fair point. That's fair. But this would also work if she was four. Regardless, uh, you've played a lot of uh, Cadence, and you've played a lot of Seleno. Thoughts on the back and forth between them? So this is where my earlier statement about being able to flip-flop between the two of them, because I figure there's probably a 40-card deck in common with, well, 41-card deck in common with the two of them, that between the sideboard and the 5-card the wiggle room, you can just convert between Cadence and Seleno. Because that would be very funny to be like, yeah, I'm running this, this Cadence deck, and you show up, actually, I'm running Seleno. <laughs> Like, they're going to behave similarly. But the Tempest and the Seleno pink list, I don't know. I feel like it's going to be slower and it doesn't interact quite as much. Let's see. So Seleno, what would you actually need to swap here? You could swap out the Professors of Loyalty. Yeah, that's, that's one of the main problems, is that swapping the main colors is pretty rough on the entry. Godot, we're not talking about sideboarding, we're talking about the five card difference we can have between our finalized lists and what we're showcasing here. Yeah, so the, you, are, you are correct, you cannot sideboard mains. The five card wiggle room, one of those cards has to be the main. Right, another one's probably going to be one of the problems, because Seleno would really prefer to start off with... Um, Harsh accusations. You know, this actually isn't as uh, as problematic as you thought, because with Professor of Loyalty being two copies, right? And then you still have your Holiday Spirits anyway, which are great. Right. And then maybe you take out On Shuffle because you're not going to draw through your deck as quickly if you're not running Cadence. And then one copy of Silverstream for like a uh, a property damage if you wanted and then the main like that's five and then you still have uh five people or eight pieces of pink entry and you're going to keep loyal pony and seleno regardless the only thing you're losing is you don't have the tempest anymore which like kind of sucks well but the tempests are kind of important there well you could drop the professor of loyalties the cadence and then like two of something else for um for Tempest and call it good. Right, and that DJ, was that DJ and something else. Man, that is that doable? That might be doable. Right. See, that's why I thought it would be funny. You I, might be you might be able to swing that actually. Yeah, it would require some tinkering and like I said, I think the deck in either case would be suboptimal even below like what this is now, but it would be really amusing in my my past history of just being like you fell for a fool thundercross what attack the shenanigans oh lol ha huh. i didn't realize how close it got to that that's that's pretty interesting all right well we've got uh a combo and an aggro and ivory what you got uh but he's got a traitor. That's a lot of yellow. I mean, it's a decent amount of yellow. And I mean, it's just Thorax is a fun list, and I just want to play Thorax. There are five cards in this list that aren't yellow. Yes, sir. And then one of those is going to name yellow. 
So there are two cards in this list that aren't yellow. Yeah, this is... this, I mean, it just goes really fast. You don't usually have wreck issues. They do happen with, like, your higher wreck cards. Um, but... I shouldn't think so with the traitor Snacky. around. Snacky boy. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're only going to have issues at, like, the very start of the game if you yeah. just don't get any of your entry. You can yeah. also recover fairly well in most circumstances, so it's a little more resilient than other aggro lists as long as you haven't overplayed your hand. And but you... we'll see if it can go fast enough to beat the combos and the controls. It's probably pretty close. It's mostly going to depend on who gets more of the uh, the movement. Is it going to be combo with levitation and worn out, or is it going to be thorax with defend the hive? I don't know. Because remember, this thing plays in adoption options and grabs basically the three power cards out of its deck, and it's just like, hi. Yeah, pick pick the power cards as well. Brian for protection on uh, some of your other friends being removed. Bunyip for point acceleration. Antoine and Fluttershy for shenanigans. Angel or Fluttershy for just efficiency. Like, there's just so much you can grab. I love it. If I was playing aggro, I would definitely run Monothorax. I'm going to run Thorax. Thorax is a traitor to the hive. That's fair. Which means that among the three lists that are being played here, the only color that we don't have is orange by itself. Which I also think is a completely viable deck. And I was thinking about that as well. And then I decided that that requires too much thought. You think that deck requires thought? Cadence goes fast. So does Grogar. Gotta go fast, gotta go fast. I mean, Grogar... You play the Troublemaker and then you punch it in the face. There's no thought. <laughs> uh, okay, so... Real talk for a moment. The reason I didn't go with that is because I have almost no experience piloting it. I don't know how it wants to run. It wants I... to play the Troublemakers and like, punch them in the face. I, I, I was gonna say, I already just nailed it. I, I get that, but... As that uh, recorded gameplay showed, I don't really know what I'm doing with it. Like, I kept a very bad hand. Eh, that's... Yeah, but keeping bad hands is something that can be practiced in, like, 20 minutes. And... This is your last chance. You can change it. We're still nope. on stream. The stream's not done yet. Nope. <laughs> like, I could run that, but I don't feel as confident with it. Run Thorax instead. I would also be tempted to run Grogar just because Garble is my secret love. Garble and GP, one true pairing. He does have a way with words, doesn't he? He really does. He's, he's such a, a poet at heart. Also, all, all those cards in your hand, give them to me. Now put them in the trash. Put, put them in the trash right there. That's why I have Featherweight, to draw me more. Where does the first card go? That's right, in the trash hole. <laughs> what about that second card you drew? Where does that That's go? right, it goes in the trash too. Anyway. I'm excited for Continentals this year. I think there's a lot of options out there. I think we've seen a lot of the power decks, but not all of them. I think there's going to be some stuff that people are going to pull out that hasn't been seen at uh, other events so far this year. And I think there's people that will be coming with unexpected uh, lists, too, whether or not they are known to the public. And I think this is also going to be one of the largest Continentals that we're going to have had in the last three years. Thank goodness. And hopefully the fire alarm won't go off this time in the middle of top eight. It did, it did, it did. It that was, was top four. That was 2021. I didn't say it was last year. And it was also during top <laughs> four. And it the was. Flies. Hey, if it's going to go off, at least make it go off at like 
this perfect moment like it did last time. Will the combo fire or will the game end with the combo person losing? But was like if it hadn't been called, wasn't wasn't Bugle just gonna be like, uh oh, no, you win? No, he said he said I might just concede, and then he said no, actually play it out because he wasn't before the sure. thing. Okay, yeah. I'm glad that we instituted the uh, the full rules on precisely when concession happens. Yes, when the signatures are on the match slip. Yep, not until then. Speaking of, uh, that is something else that is worth calling out here. If you make top eight, top cut, I, did we announce what we're doing there? I think it was over 24 and we switched to top 16? 24 yeah. goes to top 16, anything else goes to top eight. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So if you make top cut here, uh, remember that the rules for running out of time have changed in elimination rounds. So do go check those out because the changes there mean some interesting things if you are running either a very fast or very slow deck. Good point. Because we changed from... We are no longer doing sudden death. Sudden death is what happens if all the other mechanisms fail. Yeah. Because that changed after Babs, right? Yes, because yeah, that actually... A weird situation there. A thing occurred that needed to not happen again, so we fixed it. Now, if you are unfortunately unable to attend Continentals this year, don't worry. We have you covered. It is right there in our name. We are going to have commentary being provided by two excellent players here. Animoy and Eminently Sensible, who will be providing remote commentary throughout the duration of Continentals. And if you're still looking for content, just sans commentary, Harmony is going to be streamed, and are we going to... We're probably not going to mess with Chaos, right? We're going to stream everything we can, because if the hotel keeps having basically infinite bandwidth... All right. As long as the we'll setup's see. up, we'll do it. We'll see what we can do. And of course, you can find that on our Twitch channel here. Do we have anything else that I missed for convention announcements? Uh, the promos. The promos are up. We talked about what those are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me... Um, I don't have those ready. Stall, stall for like 30 seconds. Stalling for 30 seconds. So, out of all of the decks that we talked about uh, on our stream two weeks ago, what deck would you absolutely not run in Continentals? That stupid wishboard thing. I think you've which, already answered one, that for all of us. Which one, though? Because there were two. Both. Neither? Bo too both much thought both seem too much valid. Thought required. Both? Both. I, yeah, I like I both. I don't like mm -hmm. running thinky decks in Continentals. That's fair. It is a thinky. long, long day. I mean, I like some thinky during Continentals. The only time I ran a thinky deck during Continentals was when I knew I wasn't going to have to play the first three rounds because of Enterplay's badly planned uh, one-round buy rules that year. That's fair. <laughs> I mean, that was funny. How many um, how many vouchers did we show up with? It's just like, hi, I'd like to skip all three of these first rounds and just like have to win one. She showed up with nine, if I recall correctly. <laughs> I no, know, that, that was, no, that was the year when you had. No, you're talking like about when the. Or something. That oh, that was, was when you had to be invited by winning events, and she's had nine invitations. Right, she's just farmed salt for six months prior to that, and was just like, oh, you wanted to go to Continentals. Oh, that's cool. No. The no, the buys were you could use up to three and me and Bugle showed up with three, so we came we went into round four. I think and we're like, alright, I'm ready for round one. Oh yeah, that was the year I was judging that. I think yeah. I had like four of them or something. 
that was the year with So Now Go Moon. Yeah, because I, yeah, cause I dropped out to give somebody else a spot in top eight. Yeah. Uh, so, so we were talking about the promos. Promos? Promos. Promos. Promo. Look at the promo. Look at this. Look at the cute horse. Look how cute she is. Aww. I'm breaking rules by letting bits of her obscure game elements, but it's fine. Don't worry about it. She's very cute. And here's the other promo. This one's a little less cute. This one's still cute. Or more cute, depending on how you define that. Look, she just wants to burn the world. It's okay. She With hair tentacles? Look. Yes. With hair tentacles. Tentacurls? Tentacurls? Ah, now you're coming up with good subtitles. Why didn't you... Yeah. It's not too late. Wait, no, that's it's too way late, too late. The promo. <laughs> yeah, it's way too late. We have Sharpies. We just need to ban the card and then reform yeah. it. Yeah, that's <laughs> fair. All right. I'm not finding more art for this. <laughs> I'll find more art for it. No, you won't. Anyway, that will wrap up our discussion on this topic for today. We would like to give a big shout out to all of our patrons on Patreon. Thank you so much for your regular support. If you aren't currently a patron and you enjoy what we do, please consider donating as doing so does enable us to continue making content like this and lets you earn some great perks as a bonus. If you have comments or questions you'd like to send our way, feel free to reach out to us through Facebook, Twitter, or email. And if you're a patron, you can also chat live with us on Slack any day, anytime, and see all the cute pictures of foxes. There which mostly come from me. have been excessive quantities of foxes recently. The Fopses. The Fopses. Finally, if you're looking to watch any of our previous videos, including tournament recordings, you can find them on our YouTube channel linked just below the stream. You know, recordings like those that will be up after Continentals. With all that said, thank you to each and every one of our viewers, both here and now and watching this recording later. We are, as always, Commentary is Magic. I am, as always, Grand Pollens. Big Cheese. Our cat and... And Ivory Starlight. None of, continentals. none of whom are large language models. <laughs> Says you. Cutie As mark. an AI language model, I can't confirm this. Cutie Mark Acquisition Program. That's my. Bye. Bye. <laughs>